How, how, how? Welcome back. Welcome back to Tumble Home, a Boundary Waters podcast. We're midway through day two. It's Sunday here in the Lake County. We've crossed into Lake County, and uh, we're on, I believe this was the ninth portage of the day, mm -hmm. into Boulder Lake. Yeah. So we'll quickly recap the route yes. from Little Sag. Yeah, so um, out of Little Sag, we had the two 20s. Pretty back to back, straight forward, into uh, Elton. Elton, yes. Elton, which looked very dry. Yeah, it looked low. And it looked really low and very dry. Like, and we've noticed too, like a lot of the farther west we're getting, like the mud on the portages is pretty dry, and it's mm -hmm. got this weird grayish color to it. It's almost like yeah, like the pollen from the spring, and then like that leftover like winter dust didn't get like washed out as much. Yeah, but and uh, then we. Uh, so yeah, we went down Elton. There was nobody camped on Elton. We really didn't see anybody else on Little Sag either getting off um, of that lake. And then from Elton, we had to go down to Maqua. 60 into Maqua. Sexy into Maqua. And then uh, the fisher says it's 100 to Ho. Uh, the Nat Geo was quite different. It said about 70, I believe, in the Ho. So we had a, I think it was closer to 70 there. Yeah. Seems like when there's a difference in distance on a portage, the Nat Geo has it more dialed in. But anyways, we got into Ho and we moved her down Ho. And that's where we started to actually see some bit of a west wind. I mean, there's a little bit getting off a little sag, but it's been pretty gentle wind today. Yeah. No, and that was like, I think the portage, the portages between Little Sag and Makwa were clearly have been used but that turn that we made to go north up to Ho, we were i'm almost positive the first ones through there the only tracks yeah. were moose yeah a lot of moose tracks a lot of moose poops at one point we did see some really big wolf tracks on one of these portages yes through this little chain that we went through uh, before we got off of Ho, we there is you can just basically paddle straight up and it says it's may may lake i mean it's all one lake really oh, yeah. it's like may may bay off of Ho, mm -hmm. but that's, I guess, technically at that point you're into the um, Mugwump PMA. Yeah. And then uh, we kind of paddled up from there. You can get to, uh, where am I at here? Kukush. The Kukush Lake. Kukush. And the mythical Kukush people. Yes. With their tiny little bows and arrows. Uh, they did not slay us in our canoe. They let us pass and we waved. And there's a big, like a very steep beaver dam from Meme up to Kushkush. And like a really cool flat, you could just see enough into the lake. And there's across from us, there was this big flat rock with some big pines. Yeah. So if anybody's looking for a PMA, an easier PMA adventure, you could easily pull up into Kushkush and camp in there if the Kushkush people allow oh, it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. want to make sure you bring an offering. Definitely so, bring an offering. Uh, we, we turned it back around and headed, it was a 40 into Fee. And there was a nicer little campsite on Fee. The one on Ho was pretty ho, ho, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like they had been, been saving that one for hours, folks. Yeah, he didn't even share that one with me. Mm. Yes, thank you. For the one on yeah, the one on Fee was pretty charming. Yep. And then uh, from Fee, it was about an eighty. Um, well, that was the... that was the goofy one into V though, and then it shows it as one eighty. And even the Nat Geo shows it as just one portage, but there is a little like pond in the middle. Definitely two portages. It's two portages, and that thing's floated out. We got some good video and pictures in there. It's yeah, it's kind like the, of one of the maze. weirdest things I've paddled through. It like felt like something through in like a swamp where there's all these flooded trees. You got to choose your direction mm -hmm. just right, otherwise you'd have to like back <laughs> up. Uh, so yeah, yeah that... there's some mud walking in that one, and I, oh, don't, yeah. I do not like mud. I was kind of shin deep in mud at one point. It and... was a little, I was a little worried because I was like, there's still like three portages until we get to Boulder. If this yeah, is what getting... this one looks like. Yeah, I figured they were going to, that was about as bad as it got between V and V. Yeah. That one was nasty, but then there's a, again here from, from V to Ledge, which we've determined is just short for legendary. Yes. But it's a pretty lake, and uh, that campsite on Ledge was really nice too. So Definitely. Legendary. Yes. Well, Ledge was funny too. The whole South Shore was like big spruces, and then the North Shore was all big pines. So it's yeah. kind of like this meeting place of the tree species. Mm -hmm. They're just sitting facing each other across the lake. But uh, yeah. yeah, the Fisher lists the V to uh, Ledge at 160, and I think the Nat Geo had it at 147. Yeah, I don't know. They're both close. Who knows? Yeah. That was about right. 
And then uh, then we got to the weird one. We were talking like, how many portages have you been on where you actually have to take a left or a right turn at some point? Yeah, direct V or direct T yeah, in one T direction. intersection, and they're not marked out here, folks. Um, but this is one from Ledge. You either can go straight west to Cap. That's a 200, it says. Or if you want to, there's a left turn out there, and it was very easy to find. Yeah. And it shows it being like halfway down the portage. It was definitely on the first third of that portage. It was we came upon the turn much very faster quickly. than I was expecting it, and then but a very obvious left turn and mm -hmm. uh, kind of go downhill from there, and then we ended up uh, there's a little creek. And the fisher shows it going straight across the creek. Yeah. The Nat Geo literally just shows you have to like go up this creek somehow and then get it back over. It was very mysteriously labeled. And then uh, the Garmin we had on just to try and get a measurement of what this portage actually was yeah. like. And that showed like you go to the creek and then hang like a left back to the east. Yeah. And which is actually what happened. We were like, well, we kind of the way that canoe got put in at the landing there. It was facing back to the west. We're like, well, we'll just go over there and see, and then if we, it's not over there, we can turn around and head that way. But there it was. And then that last section from that creek crossing down was the longest section. It says 135, which seems pretty accurate. I had the GPS going to measure, more or less. Yeah. And if you, it obviously it included the short little tiny paddle across the creek there. But when we were all said and done, it came in at a mile from ledge down to boulder. So and then, yeah, the last section coming down to boulder here, like this was a very well traveled portage. The whole thing, yeah. honestly, from ledge all the way down, there was like there was cribs on ledge. Like it was so weird. Old was, cribs. Yeah, we had not seen a, a crib on the portage landing since Little Sag, and then all of a sudden we're up in like kind in of the middle, the of, middle nowhere. of nowhere lake. And there's two on the east and west side of ledge. Yeah. But yeah, the trail down from the creek down to boulder was really nice, and then. Uh, you started getting downhill, and there was some really big pines in there and some nice cedars, and the trail was just in overall really good shape. It so. was. I was thinking, like, this is on the way over here. I was thinking this is going to be maybe some nastiness with mm -hmm. just how remote the portages are, but I was saying as we were walking down here, this might be the nicest portage we've taken in yeah. maybe we figured, on the whole trip. We figured once we got to Boulder and then into Adams that then we they, the portages would start getting nicer as they get, you got the traffic coming up from the Kawishui. Yeah. I think that's obviously how most people are going to get to Boulder. They're not coming in from Ho via no. uh, Maqua. So... Yeah, that was kind of the bushwhacking part of our adventure. Uh, we did kind of sneak into the little bit of a PMA paddle and <laughs> just a little look, yeah. see. I don't think that really counts as going into PMA, mark. but yeah, we 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 got a look at least. So, yeah. and before we started this portage, we've been kind of going. I I think I said this is the ninth portage of the day since the the V one was a double. I think we, we had planned on eight to Boulder, but I think it was nine in reality. Ten if you include ten if you include the out. little creek crossing, yeah. I guess. So yeah, ten loads mm -hmm. and unloads. Yeah. Um, I guess that's the most accurate way to put it. And then we were talking like, well, it's, you know, probably one, two in the afternoon now. Uh, we did kind of get a later start with a lazy breakfast. So we're like, well, we'll get down to Boulder. Hopefully there's a good landing. We can have a little snack and maybe actually get the wine out. We have been traveling with the wine stowed away. Um, just as yesterday we were traveling with the wine out and... I had to take like a nap when we got to well, Little Sag. And that's the the refreshing white is a yeah, little bit a little more easier, easier to work with. We just got like a Merlot, which it's pretty you, heavy. You gotta take it easy on that as you're still moving over portages. And at this point, we do only have twenty and our two twenty rod portages into Adams, which uh, was our intention intentional right. uh, plans. But and if you're wondering um, for anybody watching this. Why I haven't turned to the right. Don't look at the lake. Uh, we've got a little bit of a, a development slash yeah. uh, thing. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Breaking news. Breaking news. So we come down to this portage um, and I, I look I came out. down first and I didn't see it and Eric comes down and he goes, wow, look at that. And there is very obviously a wildfire to the direct south of us. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I'm looking directly out onto the lake now. You can see a plume, and we have uh, west, uh, basically a west wind right now. And so you can see the plume is coming up straight there. Mm -hmm. And then the plume, you can see it. Yes. There's a very dense plume of smoke moving to the west with the wind. Yeah. So we're currently in a fine position. Um, if you have to look at the map, um, yeah, we're flipping around. So we're we're here. And, and so we're looking basically due looking south. straight south, and it looks like it's... And we haven't, we were talking, we haven't had any thunder or lightning in, like, at least a week. So it almost has to be, like, a campfire that kind and of And it was, uh, as we noted yesterday, 
pretty windy out of the northwest. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at one of these two campsites is looking about to be in the right position for where that plume is coming off of yeah and my working theory is and we kind of teased it at the top of this track it's been dry drier than it has been over our home side mm -hmm. of the park yep and uh yeah it seems like uh somebody let a fire maybe get out of control in that wind yesterday yep um so i don't know i mean i the wind forecast for today isn't anything extreme it's just supposed to stay west but then we're looking at maybe it's switching to the south so we're gonna kind of I have to head in that direction yeah. and see what we can see and see how to safely keep ourselves at, uh, at a, a, its uh, distance. And it's like the last thing I expected to see out here this year, just based on the amount of rain that we've been getting over by, you know, the Clearwater side and down by the lake. But I think these portages are indicative of it maybe being a little drier in the heart of the park here. So right on. And uh, so, yes, we're going to go over, I think, just looking at the map. It sure looks like that is on the eastern side of Adams. It, you know, and we had said too, it could be farther off. It could be all the way down on the Kushui River somewhere. Yeah, it's hard to say right now, but, but it, it, looks it looks reasonably close. close. <laughs> and this is the first we've seen it. So yeah. it's not a huge fire. And we obviously would have heard about this had it started before we left. Right, and that's so, the other thing. It, the only other thing that it could possibly be is sometimes you get the lightning and it smolders in a swamp for like a week. A la, a la Pagami Creek, but usually they still like know there's like some smoke kind of mm -hmm. popping. Yeah. So I mean, by all accounts, it has to be a, a man-made accidental start here. And, and uh, now we're kind of wondering about that low-flying plane yesterday. What yeah. was the Forest Service doing? Well, right. it was literally we just kind of drew a line on the map, and it was pretty much heading from Little Sag right in that direction. Yeah. So I'm guessing they're aware of it. We haven't heard anything on the weather radio mentioned. No. I'm not sure they usually would mention this on the weather radio. I think maybe they would if it got like If it was extreme. a dangerous, yeah, yeah. If, it, if it becomes, but there's really not a whole lot in the way of crazy wind for the forecast for the next couple of days. No. So, you know, we have some experience in navigating around wildfires on our Aquatico trip and you know, we just know to be smart and make sure you're staying downwind or upwind of it yeah so and so it looks to us like if we we were kind of going for the island side on adams or i guess in this chance you know we'll see you know if it could be on the island but i think if we we're over on the west side of adams with the current wind forecast that we're just fine and yeah. there's two routes out of adams to the south mm -hmm. so we could like go all the way over to smite into beaver or we could just do a direct southern route into beaver and kind of swoop down around it yeah uh, once the wind kind of switches to the south then we'll be yeah safely on the other back side of it so and yeah it's not it's not, i mean it does seem drier over here but it's also not like dangerously dry no it seems like it would make like an insane run and there's rain in the forecast for monday night yeah possible and then definitely a better chance of rain on tuesday during the day so no nah, i mean it's always a little hairy when you run around a corner and find yourself looking at a big plume of smoke but especially in the middle of the park i think we are like we're, we are heart of the park right now the heart is on fire <laughs> uh can you hold this yeah so i gotta get in on this merlot myself yeah so yeah it uh boy i never thought i would have ever been in a situation where we were uh kind of live bringing to you something this dy dynamic in the field you we, never know what's going to happen out here we may be the only like on the ground observers of this fire at the point i mean it, it may have been started yesterday in that wind for all we know and mm -hmm. that's probably the most likely scenario until we find out more it's just speculation obviously and by the time you listen to this we'll i'm sure have more information on what the heck happened out here yeah but just from on the ground perspective uh, finding this live um this is the best guess we have and we're gonna we're gonna be careful around it but we are definitely still going to adams to get a closer look oh yes i mean it's kind of one of those things where you see it and then uh, it's like oh i mean it's the level of uh, like kind of on the edge you were talking last night it almost feels like you're traveling to like a different country when you're out here in the middle of the park and yeah how you got to be a little bit more careful aware of your surroundings you know the you, you snap an ankle out here and it's uh yeah. it's a long way out and this just heightens it to a whole nother level and i'm never really happy to see especially if it's man-made uh the woods on fire but it, there is a level of excitement involved now that's absolutely even, even crazier than all than we already had going so yeah and that was you know we've had a little lunch snack now um got a little wine out so 
This day has taken an interesting turn, and I think this is where we're going to leave. Uh, this episode will be... Are we doing the bag episode first, or is this going to be the first episode out? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyways, this is going to... We're going to leave this episode here, because we're, we're about halfway through the trip. We have at least an hour of material on the recorder, and... So I think we're going to leave it here, folks. A cliffhanger. And, okay. The first Woo! tumble home history. Wow. So check back next week, and you'll we're going to head into Adams, and... We'll uh, I'll have all that for you and more on next week's episode of Tumble Home. So I have been Eric coming to you live from the north shore of Boulder eyeing a current wildfire. You'll have to tune in next week. Are you still doing video? Yeah. Yeah, it's really like pluming now. Yeah, you can, it's, it's very well defined right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking that the, the GoPro is super wide angle, mm -hmm. so it might not be grabbing it, but I've got some... Uh, uh, zoom lens I'll get some yeah I'd, I'd, some zoom in shots for sure and yeah we'll definitely be getting closer to this so yep. I have been Adam and also on the north shore of Boulder and uh, just recently had some wine and cheese yeah we did have a little bit of cheese salami and wine very delicious I feel uh, amped up and very excited for what the rest of this day is going to bring we will catch you on the flip side until next time remember Every day is precious, and life is a miracle. Arriva Derchi, folks. Thanks for listening. Woo! Wild. This is gonna be crazy. Might get some live cliffhanger fucking wildfire. <laughs>